Alright guys, I wanted to welcome you to my very first quick play video of Kaze Kiri Ninja Action for the PC Engine Super CD. But first of all, let me explain what quick play is and what I hope to bring from these videos in the future. In the meantime, let's start up the game and watch the cutscenes. So, I'm sure you're all familiar with Let's Plays of games where people will post themselves playing through a game from beginning to end and how to beat the game with commentary. Well, I'm not going to be doing those, <laughs> okay? Um, I plan on doing a variation of those which are referred to as many different things such as a uh, quick look or sort of just a um, an abbreviated let's play if you will and I you know they're called many different things but uh, I think quick play and some other people use this term is the best way to sum up what I'm going to be doing with these videos essentially uh, I'm going to be just popping in some random games and doing some commentary live while I play them and uh, it can be anywhere from you know 10 to 15 minutes to upwards of maybe an hour or more depending upon how long you know I think I need to play a game and how much I have to say about it and uh, you know I think it's gonna be a lot of fun because as much as I would love to review tons of the games that I have um, doing a full-on game review it takes quite a bit of time commitment and I think that quick plays are a great, uh, great way for me to um, you know, showcase a game to you guys, tell you what it's all about, just sort of give you a preview of the gameplay, some of my thoughts, and not have to commit to doing a full-on game review, and this way I'll get to share some of the more, you know, quirky and fun games and hidden gems and such that I like to play, and get them out there to you guys on a much faster basis. So anyway, we are watching the opening cutscene here for Kaze Kiri, and this is an exclusive game to the PC Engine Super CD in Japan. It never made it outside of Japan or to any other system. And essentially this is a side-scrolling action game where you star this kick-ass ninja, and this game, I have to say, really makes you feel like a badass. Uh, the different moves that you can pull off, there's, uh, there's quite a bit. And something that's really unique about this game is that it limits you to a single plane. There are no platforms. Um, and it has some really interesting gameplay mechanics, which I'll get to show you guys here in a second. It's actually a fairly challenging game, so I just do want to say that I did put on five lives, and I put it on easy. Um, the reason why I put it on easy is because it's still challenging on easy, but on normal the enemies take a very long time to kill, and I kind of want to show you guys as much of this game as I can in this quick play, so you got to get a sense for the settings and such, and the different enemy types. So I'm choosing to play it on easy, and uh, just for anybody that's watching this, all the games I'm going to be playing, no emulation whatsoever. This is played on actual hardware with the actual game itself. So. Uh, I'm going to kind of give you a walkthrough of all the different moves that you can do. So you have throwing knives, and something really unique about this game is, as I'm throwing the throwing knives, you'll notice that my life actually drains in the top left, and it refills over time, um, which is something that's actually, you know, you can't abuse these throwing knives, because it would be pretty cheap to keep spamming them, so it's a really interesting mechanic. And then you'll also notice in the top right, that there is a meter for the enemies. And essentially, you can't progress in the level until you uh, deplete that meter all the way to the bottom. So you see this here is the end of the very beginning of the very first stage. Well, the prelude, I guess you can say. Um, you can't advance until I kill three more enemies. So let's take out these guys. And now I'm able to advance. You can actually bypass any enemies. You don't have to fight anymore once the bar is depleted. And this game has a lot of almost hidden moves that you can do. And yes, by the way, since this is a Super CD game, it has amazing music. This game, the soundtrack really stands out and helps bring a somewhat um, pretty good action game, uh, I would say, to a kind of a, a great action game just based on the soundtrack alone. I think it's a really great soundtrack. So there's different moves you can do. You can run by holding up and right in the direction that you're running. So you can't just press forward. If you press forward, you walk. So you got to press up in the direction you're, that you're going to be going. You can slide by dull tapping on the directional pad left or right. There's a jump. When you jump in the air, you can also press down and attack to sort of do a dive kick. Um, if you press crouch and forward at the same time, you'll do a backflip, and crouch and back at the same time, you'll do a front flip, or I should say a backflip, but in the direction towards the right. Um, you can also press the select button, which will take away life, but also make you temporarily invincible for a brief period of time. 
Uh, what else is there? I'm sure I'm forgetting something. There's quite a few things, but uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out as I go, but I'm pretty sure that's it. So, yeah, the game is pretty basic. You're essentially just taking out hordes of enemies that come running at you, and as the game progresses, it gets more and more difficult because it throws many different varieties and types of enemies at you, um, to the point where there's times where you'll be taking on, you know, half a dozen guys at once. And when you finally do master the controls, it, it really makes you feel pretty awesome as you kind of take on all these guys, and it, it really, I don't know, it, it's a very simple game, but they do one thing right with the controls and the gameplay, and the combat just feels really good. Pretty colorful game. The graphics are by no means um, some of the best on the PC Engine, but they definitely do the job well. And it's really a shame that they don't use more of the cutscenes that you've seen in the opening. Um, and I wasn't paying attention, and I haven't played it in a while, but from what I remember, I, essentially this guy is girlfriend gets kidnapped or something like that, and he goes to rescue her, so it's a pretty simple story. And as I mentioned before, uh, there are no platforms, no branching paths, every level is essentially the same thing, just with a retooled background, and um, different soundtrack, and eventually some different enemies. And unique areas like this here, there really aren't that many in the game, where you'll notice there are ninjas jumping out in the foreground. It's a nice touch, but unfortunately the rest of the game kind of lacks little touches like that. Not necessarily a bad game, this is actually a really good action game, and I highly enjoy it. Um, and I should also note that it is one of the more rare PC Engine games, and it comes at a fairly high price as well. You'd be hard-pressed to get this for less than 100 uh, on eBay, and typical selling price is about $150. Alright, so we got all the enemies depleted, and now we get to take on the first boss in the game. Bosses in this are fairly varied, and they do take quite a bit of uh, memorization for, you know, their different attack patterns. This guy, it's been a while since I fought him, so hopefully I don't mess up too bad here. And like I said, I can sit here spamming this. It doesn't do much damage to the boss. You can also throw, that's right, that's something I forgot. You can move up close to an enemy, and if you attack when you're close, it will throw them. Now like I said, this is on easy mode, so the enemy attack patterns and everything are all regular, but the enemies do take a bit more damage when I attack, and I'm just doing that so I can move along at a faster pace through the game so that you guys can get a sense for all the different levels, because uh, I have not been able to beat this game yet myself. Uh, I have got pretty far, but uh, there is no way I'd be able to make it too far on normal, because it's, it's pretty difficult on normal, and there is also a hard difficulty. So now we're going to move into the sewers, if I remember right. Yep. So as you'll notice, this is going to be very similar to the first level, just with a different background. And now we have a new introduction of guys with spears as our new enemy type. I should vary my attacks a bit more so you guys can see some of the cool flips and stuff you can do. It takes The learning curve is a, a little bit high, you know, to kind of get used to all the different mechanics, because it's it, the controls are a little strange. They're not your typical uh, controls. It's a little weird to kind of get used to pressing f backwards and and down at the same time to do this backflip. It's, uh, it's a little bit awkward. I could spam my throwing nets here, just so you guys can get a sense for how fast my life can actually drain if I do that. And the enemies in this are, you know, they're fairly reactive to your attacks, especially later on. They will block a lot, and you'll really have to go in for the throws. Um, and you can counter their throwing knives as well that they'll throw at you. You just gotta do a slash right at the right time. What's great is that you're never really stuck in one level for too long. It, uh, it keeps you moving at a, a pretty good pace here through the different areas. Alright, now we got Falling Rock, so you can see the game is constantly throwing new different types of hazards my way. Not always just in the form of enemies, but it's not very frequent. 
that they uh, add in stuff like falling rocks or environmental hazards. Gotta be careful because I'm draining my life. And you'll notice now that also in the levels, uh, the required enemies that I have to kill is increasing more and more the further I get into the game. Which, as you can see, is quite a bit of enemies, and I have to say, um, if I was playing this on normal, I probably would still be in like the previous stage, because the enemies tend to take a lot more hits, and you do stay in the stages for a much longer amount of time. So for the interest, like I said, showing you guys more of what this game has to offer, and that make you endure uh, the repetitive gameplay. It, it is repetitive, but it's repetitive in an old school sense that it's it's still fun. It's not monotonous. Kind of use that enemy's body shield there. <laughs> it absorbed that guy's uh, throwing knife for sure. See, as you can see, he's blocking my attack, so the enemies in this are not brain dead by any means. See, eventually you can start getting used to, uh, it's just been so long since I've played this, I, I'm not in the groove yet. This game takes a groove that you gotta get into before you're fully accustomed to all the flipping around that you gotta do. But I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering, uh, is this worth the money? Well, that's a hard question. It depends. If you think this looks fun, um, I mean, to me, it's it's hard to recommend anybody spend, uh, you know, over $100 on a single, and that's the end of the level there, so I gotta backtrack and kill some more enemies so I can advance. It's hard for me to recommend anybody spending, uh, you know, that much money on a single old-school game. It's, um, I bought this because I, I watched some videos and I thought it looked, you know, like a pretty simple but fun action game, and, and that's exactly what I got out of it. There's also, you know, it's a little bit hyped up because it is rare, it's, you know, it's a fairly good game, unique to the PC Engine, which adds some value, and, you know, the fact that it's not that common of a game um, adds to the hype, so that also drives the prices up on it. I haven't really used the uh, invincibility, which I'll do here. I don't really ever see a use for it, to be honest. Maybe if you're surrounded, but the fact that it takes away life, and you can't control when you come out of it. I just never really find a use for it. Oh, I actually don't even have to kill him. I don't think, do I? It's not letting me advance. Out of here. Oh, that's weird. Okay, there we go. Wrong direction. Oh, jeez, took me by surprise there. Alright, so now I'm, like, facing uh, my clone. I'm pretty sure if I remember it, this is, like, the main villain in the game. I could be wrong on that, but he looks familiar to me from a boss later in the game. And he has my same attack, so... Typically, when it comes to games like this, where you have a sort of shadow clone of yourself in a way... Yeah, that's usually the main bad guy. in this game are not a pushover. I can't throw any more stars though. Oh, he got me. Right, first light down. I do have five lives. Which I don't think I'm going to get through using all of them. Ah, he escaped. Yeah, so that is the guy from later on in the game. And from what I remember, there's only like one more or two more cutscenes in this game, and the, the opening animation movies are actually really great. Despite having no voice acting in them, they, they really do convey what they need to convey to get across the, the story, as simple as it may be. Yeah, here we go. This is close to the, uh, the next cutscene, if I remember right. Or I could be mistaken. Well, it's, yeah, it's sort of a semi-little scene here where he's in the water with his breathing pipe and he's going to climb up the wall. 
I wish they had more sequences like this in the game, because it really adds a, a simplicity to it that, um, a, a sort of unspoken narrative that I really like. Like, you can tell this guy is on his quest to go save the girl. And I won't spoil it, um, well, I'm not going to get to that point in the game anyway, I don't think, but at the end of the game you can, um, you can accidentally kill the girl that you're trying to rescue, which is a really unique twist. Pretty atmospheric here, uh, with the thunder in the background, sound effects, rain in the foreground, you know, it's, it's, it's got little touches that kind of elevate the graphics above just simple repeated textures and it's got a little bit of parallax scrolling going on uh, in the foreground there so not a terrible looking game by any means but the music is definitely really freaking cool I'm sure a lot of you are probably uh, drawing like comparisons to Strider or Shinobi or the Ninja Warriors by watching this, and um, you'd be right. So if you enjoy those kind of games, definitely give Kazekiri a try. As you can see, the enemies now are starting to get tougher and tougher, taking more hits to bring down. Another thing I want to note is the sound effects, like. You feel it feels very satisfying to land these hits with your sword. It has a really good sound effect, it's a good impact to it. It's just like with any first person shooter, modern first person shooter today, it's important to have good sound effects in your games. You want to feel that impact of the gun, or you know, in this case, the slice of the sword. It's interesting that there's no voice samples whatsoever from even the enemies here when you kill them, which perhaps it is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe we don't want uh, voice sampled death uh, sounds every time these guys are dying. Alright, there we go. Time to move on. One of these directions, there we go. Who are we fighting this time? I think this is a flying boss, if I remember right. Oh no, oh yeah, her. I think she uses like a eagle. Oh, the, oh, the cat? What is that? The little dog? Monkey? I don't know, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, there's attacks too, I forgot about that. Oh shoot, she's got a whole posse of them. So yeah, this, this game does have some pretty interesting bosses, I have to say. What the hell is that? A little lamb or whatever it does, it's got some pretty wicked attacks there. The only thing that might annoy some people is that um, since the uh, throwing star and the sword is t um, mapped to the same button, uh, you might accidentally constantly throw throwing stars when you're trying to attack with your sword in some cases and lose life, you know, when you don't want to. Type of enemy. Not sure what these guys do. Let's see if I can find out. Jump and throw throwing stars, okay.
now you can see the game is starting to throw um, more than two at me at a time. In, in the previous levels, it was mostly I had to have to take on maybe two enemies at the most at the same time, but now it's up to three or more. These are like kamikaze guys, if I remember. Yep, they're there. Not kamikaze, but they're sort of on a weird flying contraption. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed my very first quick play of Kaze Kiri Ninja Action for the PC Engine Super CD. Uh, I did have about two more minutes of gameplay to this quick play, however, when I went to go edit my video, for some reason the audio had cut out. Luckily, it happened at the end of the video, and essentially what I'm telling you now is what I was talking about uh, when I had recorded it, but I'll just reiterate it now anyway. If you enjoyed my quick play and you want to see me do more of these in the future, please like this video, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. If you have any recommendations for games I should play, please, I encourage you to uh, send me a message on Facebook or post on my wall and let me know some games that you ha that you know I have and you'd like me to see me play. Um, I do plan on mainly focusing on retro games. I will play modern games from time to time as a quick play, but I think retro games are more fitted to a, a quick play style of video between you know 15 minutes to an hour long. Because uh, most modern games these days, uh, unless it's a handheld, they're bloated out with a lot of story, and it's kind of hard to show you what um, a modern game can be about within that time span. And retro games are kind of just more fit for these style of videos, in my opinion. But I'm not ruling out any any current generation games by any means. So send me your recommendations, and you know, let me know what you want to see me play. And for the most part, I'm going to try and focus on some kind of hidden gems and such that I, you know, would love to share some of my thoughts on with you guys. And, you know, just uh, doing game reviews on all these games that I want to do is just, it would be very time consuming. And in reality, I just, I wouldn't have the time to commit to doing all reviews. So to me, the idea of finally getting around to doing these style of videos is definitely um, something that I'd love to continue on my channel. And like I said, they are not going to be full-blown Let's Plays of entire games. Instead, I'm going to give you quick looks uh, just like this, you know, 20 minutes, 30, 40, 50, an hour or more, uh, maybe in the future, on all different kinds of games. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next Quick Play.